The Night Beat starts right now. Smash, grab, and gone. It's happened to one Bear County business three times this summer. What we're learning about the suspects involved. And we're introducing you to the newest member of the San Antonio Fire Department, the part that this pop is going to play in future investigations. But first, dry brush and wind creating the perfect conditions for grass fires. Those two fires that you're seeing right there on your screen continue to grow tonight. Over in Dripping Springs Ranch Park, flames forced 28 horses out of their stalls. Volunteers brought out buckets of water and baled hay. Shelters also being set up for people in Blanco County impacted by flames. We have team coverage tonight. Those dry conditions also leading to pipe problems here in town. That's right. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey also tracking the heat that continues to take a toll on the community. But we begin with our team coverage in Blanco County where multiple crews are battling the smoke rider wildfire. So far it has burned 800 acres tonight. Right now it is only 30% contained. The night team's Lee Waldman is live for us tonight along Highway 90. Lee, still a pretty heavy response out there. There's a very heavy response. We're just on the border of Hayes and um, Blanco County. You can see the, the sign for Blanco County just behind us. And beyond that, there are Hayes County Sheriff's Department units and then beyond them, more fire trucks and EMS units. At this point, we know fire departments from Blanco and Hayes County are fighting this fire. They're responding from the ground and also from the sky. Now, the fire itself is burning along Highway 290 East and Ranch Road 165. 290 is shut down from Ranch Road 165 to Ranch Road 3232. That's according to the Blanco County Emergency Management. Now, we've seen several people out here watching the fire crews respond. Texas A&M Forest Service confirms the fire has, in fact, jumped to 90 as it spreads north. There are evacuations in place. Uh, 30 structures, majority of them of homes, are under mandatory evacuation in this area. Now, at this point, we do know that there is a temporary evacuation shelter set up. It is at the Blanco Methodist Church. The address for that, if you want to write this down, if you have any family in this area, it is 61 Pecan Street. Live in Hayes County, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Now, meteorologist Sarah Spivey has been tracking this fire in Blanco County and another in Gillespie County throughout the evening. Sarah, are you expecting any changes overnight that will impact those fires? Well, the good news is the firefighters will not have to deal with the heat in the overnight hours, but we are still going to be seeing winds gusting up to about 30 miles per hour. Of course, plenty of dry vegetation, juniper and oak around these fires. We've got two current fires going on in the hill country. Big Sky Fire in Gillespie County, 400 acres at this time burned, 10% contained. And as, as Lee mentioned, the Smoke Rider Fire in Blanco County, 800 acres burned, 30% contain. We'll continue to keep you updated. Smoke from these fires will continue to blow to the north because of winds from the south. The, the smoke will blow away from the San Antonio metro area, but high fire danger does continue into tomorrow. So here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast. Tomorrow, near record heat will be well above 100 degrees. Fire danger because of the gusty winds and the dry vegetation. That's a high fire risk and we'll show you those areas most at risk. And then by the week's end, we do have a chance for isolated rain and we'll shave off a few degrees from the high. I'll talk about this and more coming up in the forecast soon. Okay, Sarah, we'll see you then. The record heat and drought conditions also leading to problems underground. The San Antonio water system reports a record number of leaks and breaks. The intense heat also forcing crews to keep a slower pace, which might make it take even longer to get your water turned back on. The night team's Patty Santos tells us homeowners need to take a good look outside their yards for signs of stress on their pipes. The Texas heat breaking more than records. There'll be copper going into the house and then it'll break right here with that with that bending of the of the pipe with the expansion and contraction of the soil it'll actually break master plumber brad harrell says the connection between the meter to your home is likely where the leaks will hide cracks and clay soil are signs of trouble it can leak for days if not weeks harrell says his company is prioritizing calls but they're getting twice as many as they did last summer take a really hard look at your water bill because that's going to be a big identifier for any leaks. In July, 
We had a record high number of main and line breaks, Re higher than any month we've ever had before in our history. Pipe problems are also plaguing saws. Crews are trying to work in the coolest part of the day and prioritizing jobs. There were 700 main line breaks in July, up from 650 in June. We have to triage right now, so we're fixing the worst ones first. And right now, we can tell you there's about 11 saws outages on the map. That's affecting about 200 customers. I can also tell you that, again, Harold says those who have a clay-type soil around their property might be at a higher risk for seeing these breaks on their property line. But um, he also says, you know, the problem is if we get too much rain all at once, that clay will expand, that soil will expand, and that, too, could cause uh, breaks. So you just can't win. I'll send it back to you. Now, new tonight, one store, three break-ins in just one month. Almost Park police say that each incident involved a different suspect. As the night team's John Paul Barajas learned, police think this could be part of a bigger trend. In and out in a matter of minutes. Video shows suspects breaking into Otra Vez Couture consignment. The Almost Park business is one of at least four consignment shops hit by thieves in a matter of weeks. It is the same. It was very similar and it's been multiple stores, not just here in the city of Almost Park, also within San Antonio. So, um, like I said, if they are working together, we haven't gotten that far yet. We're still investigating. Police already made an arrest for a break-in back in June, and just yesterday, 48-year-old Peter Carrion was arrested for the second incident. Carrion has a lengthy criminal history, including several death charges. He probably has been in the store before, or um, someone else was in the store before, and pretty much knew what they were going to take. Surveillance video from July 18th shows the smashing grab happened in about 34 seconds. The man in this July 26th video was in and out in about a minute 30. While inside, he's seen breaking glass cases to get designer purses. The suspect has yet to be identified, but Almost Park is working with other agencies to get an ID on him. The third suspect that we do have is committing burglaries in other consignment stores. The investigator tells us that they have not been able to recover any of the items from Otra Vez, but they are still working on that. As for an estimate in total cost, they didn't have an exact number, but say it is a lot when you add up everything that was stolen from the store on top of damages. Back out here at the store, they have repaired their front door multiple times. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. John Paul, thank you. Another news tonight, they were found alone in the home with their dead mother. Tonight, new details in the trial against Jorge Izquierdo. He's accused of killing Cora Nickel two years ago and leaving his daughters to find their mother's body. So we want to show you a picture that the jury saw today. Family members say it shows Cora and her two children on her last Mother's Day. Cora's own mother says that she remembers the morning that she got the urgent call from her granddaughters. Nana, you need to come get us right away. Something's happened. There's red stuff all over the floor. I believe mommy's dead. I saw my daughter laying on the floor with blood surrounding from her chest up around her head. I touched her like right around her ribcage because I knew that that's where she's kind of ticklish. So I went and I touched her to see if it was just a, a prank, a joke or what. But as soon as I touched her, I knew she was ice cold. Of course, children were just five and eight years old at the time. They also took the stand and they described waking up to the gruesome scene. I went downstairs and I seen her laying there with liquid around her. I just immediately ran back upstairs because I was like scared. I thought it was like a nightmare. Mm -hmm. uh, Jorge scared those accused of killing Cora. Their children told a jury that their parents began arguing after a birthday party and then the next morning their mother was dead. Children's grandmother told the court that she saw Izquierdo's car in the driveway when she picked up the two girls. Police later found him at a relative's home in California. His defense team argues that no one saw what happened and that the evidence is circumstantial. To other stories we've been following today, the victim shot while working out at a Northside gym has not been publicly identified yet, but the suspect has. 32-year-old Jesse McWilliams seemed happy to pose for his mug shot. He's now charged with murder tonight, but records show he's also faced prior run-ins with the law for drugs and weapons, even assault on a police officer. 
Police say Mac Williams shot 34 year old man in the back of the head at the LA Fitness near Loop 410 and Blanco. Investigators still have not released a motive for that shooting. Now for a look at your headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. San Antonio City Council officially passing a resolution supporting abortion access. Now we just want to make it clear, it doesn't legalize abortion in San Antonio, but it would recommend a policy to not use city money to collect information on abortions for criminal investigations. The city attorney confirmed that police would still have to investigate crimes based on their priorities, but the city intends to fight for abortion access in the next state legislative session. He punched, kicked, choked his own dog. And now 56-year-old Frank Javier Fonseca is going to serve out one of the longest sentences for an animal cruelty case in Texas. Animal Care Services says the crime was caught on camera back in 2019. Investigators say Fonseca was angry that the Rottweiler got out of the yard. Fonseca is going to serve a 25-year sentence. ACS says the dog recovered and is now with an adoptive family. Bear County just got its shipment of monkeypox vaccines. Metro Health says that it's enough to protect 500 people against the illness. Now, we currently remain at 13 cases here in town, same as last week. Some doses are reserved for people who come into close contact with someone who's been infected with monkeypox. Right now, vaccines are available at six clinics, but people need to make an appointment first. And we have a full list of those clinics for you on our website, ksat.com. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Coming up, the San Antonio Fire Department has a new member on their team. Still ahead, we're going to introduce you to Bruno and the skills that he's bringing to San Antonio. Plus, the ideas shared in hopes of honoring the victims in the Valley mass shooting, what the city is taking into consideration before moving forward. And you could take an arsonist off the streets and earn $5,000, but the clock's ticking. The case, you could help solve it. We'll talk about it next on the Night Beat. In arsonist on the run tonight, investigators are hoping a reward will help lead to his capture. For this week, only a reward of up to $5,000 is being offered. Take a look. The Atascosa County Sheriff's Office says those fires have continued to pop up since the start of the year. Many of them began as brush fires that led to property damage. Some of those locations include Pleasanton, Peggy, Charlotte, and Christine. If you can help in that case, call 830-769-2255. Meanwhile, the San Antonio Fire Department has a new asset on their team, Bruno the Arson Detection Dog. Bruno is a two-year-old lab mix who's trained to find flammable liquids. He's the Arson Bureau's third dog. His human counterpart, Aaron Romero, has been on the arson team as an investigator for about five years now after spending seven years on a fire truck. The pair have been working together since April. Romero tells us working with Bruno allows their investigators to zero in on what caused an intentionally sent fire. He gives us a, a really good direction in, um, uh, as to where we need to look and where we need to start pulling um, uh, evidence, um, samples and uh, to send off for, uh, to get analysis uh, done. And if it weren't for Bruno, investigators say it would probably take them even longer to solve investigations. New tonight in Military City, USA, a new bill passed to help veterans who have been exposed to toxic fumes from burn pits. After blocking a measure last week, the Senate passed the PACT Act today. And the military used burn pits to dispose chemicals, trash, medical waste, especially in Afghanistan. This bill is going to expand health care. It directs Veterans Affairs to presume that certain illnesses were related to burn pit exposure, and it allows veterans to receive disability payments without having to prove that the illness was a result of their service. So now the measure is going to head to the president's desk for his signature. Plans to honor the 21 lives lost in Uvalde are moving forward. Several ideas were heard today during today's uh, strategic planning meeting. One idea was to place 21 plaques around a fountain right in the middle of the town square. Jackie Casares' uncle said that he would rather see a permanent memorial at Robb Elementary once the building gets torn down. At this point, nothing is concrete. Leaders say that the families, the victims' families, that is, they're going to have the final decision on this. Let's take a live look outside with live cam on this Tuesday night, looking at the quarry down there. Another hot one, Sarah. And the big question right now is what kind of fire danger are we looking at for tomorrow? Yeah. 
Yeah, generally around San Antonio and around the metro area, typically high grass fire danger. Outside in the more rural areas of the city, very high fire danger. The reason for that, there's more vegetation outside of the downtown San Antonio and San Antonio metro area. Here's a look at the Texas A&M Forest Service fire forecast for South Central Texas, or at least grass fire danger forecast. And again, anywhere you see that deep orange color, that's where the fire risk is very high. You can notice it's mainly across much of the rural areas out across the hill country and out west uh, toward Del Rio. But even around the San Antonio metro area, this lighter orange color means high fire danger. Anywhere you are tomorrow, because the winds are gusty, because it's going to be hot, and because it has been so dry that all of the grass and vegetation is almost like tender to a fire. So keep in mind, that this is important. No campfires or burn piles tomorrow. Avoid using any kind of tools that create sparks. If you do smoke, make sure to dispose of those cigarettes properly. Do not drag trailer chains. And then finally, don't park your vehicle on grass tomorrow because a simple spark from your vehicle could create a grass fire or even worse, a wildfire. So that's what we can do to uh, at least do our part to avoid fires. Today, the high temperature 102, just one degree shy of the record set back in 2011. And we're going to be awfully close to a record tomorrow, forecasting 103 in San Antonio, both tomorrow and Thursday. The records for the day are 103. Then by Friday and Saturday, our temperatures may dip brief briefly below uh, 100 degrees. The reason for that is there could be a little bit of isolated rain in the mix on Friday and Saturday, but isolated is the key word there, unfortunately. There is a low pressure system over Louisiana that's created quite a bit of rain, but as they've lost the daytime heating, that rain has dissipated. Energy from this low is what's going to give us that chance for isolated showers and storms on Friday and Saturday, but the big thing is that this heat high is still the major dominant weather factor, and so it's going to prevent a lot of widespread rain for us. So unfortunately, only chance for rain Friday and Saturday, and it's only about a Two, uh, to 20 percent chance for some isolated showers and storms for your Wednesday tomorrow sunrise 655. It's going to be humid in the morning for that commute 79 degrees 93 by noon 103 for the high temperature. It is going to be windy tomorrow. Wind gusts of up to about 30 miles per hour elsewhere 105 in Uvalde 106 in Creso Springs 100 in Kerrville 102 Canyon Lake New Braunfels Seguin and 102 in Gonzalez. It is also going to stay pretty humid in the afternoon tomorrow. So because of that dew points in the 60s, it's going to feel more like 106 to 108 maximum around the metro area. So take care of yourself. Make sure you're staying hydrated. Fire danger and heat, the big weather story. The secondary weather story, isolated rain possible Friday and Saturday and some light Saharan dust makes its way back into the forecast Thursday through Saturday. Yeah, that dust not so good for people who have allergies. Thank right. you. Cowboys camp continues out in Oxnard, California. That's where we find Greg Simmons tonight. And Greg, a young man from San Antonio getting some attention out there. Yeah, as a matter of fact, rave reviews for this young man, especially in the receiving core where they're very thin. When we come back, we'll let you know who that is and how well they're doing in camp. And also Neville Gallimore is our guest tonight, one of our all-time favorites. Why is shouldering so much of the blame of that playoff loss coming up? Camping with KZAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our live coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp in Oxnard, California. You know, with the injury to James Washington and the recovery of Michael Gallup at wide receiver, the only wide receiver in Cowboys camp, C.D. Lamb, with a touchdown catch. Can you believe that? He'll be the Cowboys' number one wide receiver this season with the departure of Amari Cooper. With that said, does he believe he'll be featured prominently in the Cowboys' offense? Most definitely. I don't think, I hope that doesn't change. Uh, most definitely. So, just, I mean, the way things are looking right now, we're looking pretty solid. Now, one of the young wide receivers who now has a better shot at making the roster that has caught on the attention of both Lamb and head coach Mike McCarthy is undrafted rookie out of Western Illinois, Dennis Houston, who graduated from Warren High School. Where does Dennis feel he caught the eye of the Cowboys to get into camp? Every step of the way, because they, they notice every bit of progress throughout your, your high school to college to where I'm now, but I feel like I've made strides every, every point. That's really, has really jumped out that you could, you could, you know, see it in the OTAs. I mean, he made a lot of plays. 
Um, I think everybody, both sides of the ball, was impressed. Um, and I think, you know, history would tell you, okay, now let's see what he does in pads. So, and I think he's he's put together two solid days. So, guy's a heck of a heck of a young football player. That is great to hear. The UTSA Roadrunners kicked off their fall camp this week with a shot at winning back-to-back -back Conference USA titles after taking their first last season, a school record 12-2 and finish. Today, head coach Jeff Trailer was asked if there are any transfers that could be day one contributors. I haven't seen them in pads with me coaching them yet. It's, it's been in pajamas, and there's a lot of guys that look really good in pajamas, uh, and there's a lot of guys that don't look good in pajamas. Uh, and then when the pads come on, all of a sudden, that 4-9 guy, that didn't broad jump very well. Is out there making plays like crazy. <laughs> I love the pajama reference. One of our favorites, Neville Gallimore, coming up next. And welcome back to the Night Beat. We're very excited to have back with us one of our favorite interviews here in training camp, Neville Gallimore, the defensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys. Hey. Hey, hey yourself. What's going on? How's camp? been going good so far. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely taking some steps. And you say taking steps? Yes. Steps to improve, obviously. Absolutely. Steps to improve. Steps to improve. Where do you think you need the most improvement? Um, just, you know, the big, biggest thing I'm always working on is just consistency. Right. And, you know, and, you know, the, uh, I appreciate, you know, just kind of how the practice is set up because it puts us in a lot of situational football. Because, you know, obviously we understand this game is more mental than it is physical, and it is a physical game. Last year, what a setback in just that preseason game when you, what, dislocated your elbow? Yes, that? sir. Yes, sir. And how frustrating was that for you? Because I thought at that point you were going to make a solid contribution in the season opener, if not more, right? Right, right. Um, you know, it was definitely frustrating, you know, um, just because, you know, you, <clears throat> you've improved, you've done a lot of things during camp up until that point, and, you know, you're, you're getting excited at that point when it happened. You know, the season was literally right around the corner. Right there to grab, right? You know what I mean? But it gave me an opportunity to be a student in the game, but, you know, the guys were just like, hey, man, just don't worry, patience, get, get yourself back right, and when you come back, it's time to go. So, if anything, that motivated me more. And when you was your time to play, you made an instant impact, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. And that was that because you were just um, so I, pent up with everything. Look, look man, it, it, it's funny. It's like you know, it's true what they say. You don't know what you have until it's gone. I kind of got a little glimpse of that. Getting that opportunity again is like okay. That kind of remind me how much I do love the game. You hit the reset button this year. You're ready to go. What can you contribute to this team and to <clears throat> arguably one of the best defenses in the league this year? Absolutely, and it, it's really you know just that you know that, that anchor in the middle. You know that, that, that energy. You know that that person that can really you know set the tone in the middle and, and make things happen you know obviously going into my third year I got high expectations for myself and as well as my you know the guys next to me and my coaches got high expectations for me so it's my job to, to match that and you know to surpass that and I'm that's what I'm aiming to do that's great news we're looking forward to it thank you all right great to have you with us Appreciate again. You. thanks thanks now. again all right that was nice enough to sign our camp board that will be used to help the Society of St. Vincent de Paul raise money to help feed the homeless and working poor of Bear County. Now, a little lighter workout tomorrow, but it's also going to be about an hour earlier. That means up, we're up a little hour earlier as well. I know you feel very sorry for us for that. <laughs> Live in California, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. I was about to feel sorry for you, but I know how nice the weather is there, so nah. It's all right. Good night, Greg. 62 and chilly. Nice. <laughs> Rubbing it in. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back. Big story is the heat and fire danger tomorrow. It's going to be 103 for the high temperature, challenging a record. Some light Sahara and dust moves in Thursday through Saturday. Isolated showers and storms possible Friday and Saturday. But here's the thing, we're just not going to be seeing any good rain over the next 7 to 10 days. We'll keep you updated. All right, thank you. And thank you for watching us tonight. GMSA starts at 430 tomorrow. Good night.